than it was before. Got some good times knocking upon your front door. It's the Richard Wilmore Show. Yeah, no, it's uh, like a year ago, I would never have expected to be talking to you or to even be in this position. So what, uh, I mean, you have been working. It's not like this is your first role. You are on uh, the series Broken. It's a web series, which, mm-hmm. is, which is awesome. It's a great um, It's a great show. It's well-written. It's a super important subject. I think it's awesome. Um, how did you get involved with that? So I actually am the executive producer, and... I initially approached two of my friends back in May of 2017, and I wanted to create my own content. And so I, I asked my two friends if they wanted to be involved, and they said, yeah. And then they, they brought in a fourth person who ends up being my director and co-executive producer. Her name is Kylie Molesnik. And then after the four of us got together, we talked about what we wanted to do, and we, we wanted to create meaningful content, and that was uh, topical in the world now. And when we settled on mental illness and mental health, we just... We all had a passion for it, and all of us are have some form of experience with mental illness within our own lives or our family, friends. So it's really important that it's something that we, we talk about, because not a lot of people do. And right. so once we did that, we just took off. How long did it take you to shoot? Like a crazy cat lady. That's <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> you have six episodes. How long did that take to film? Because they're, they're relatively short. They're not like... Mm-hmm. But it's still, I know, it's a ton of work. So we were in pre-production from the time of conception in May of 2017 all the way through early January of 2018. And then we shot for nine days in January and we finished February 1st. Wow. And actually we only shot for eight days because we had one day off in between. But every day, we shot it like a feature. So we didn't go episode by episode, we just, we were location. Uh, so we, we shot about 10 to 12 pages a day, which is very aggressive. And, uh, the day after we, we wrapped on February 2nd, excuse me, it was already in post. So we are already shipped it off to, uh, the post house. And then I took, I gave myself two weeks after that to just kick back, relax, not do anything, not think about it. And then after that is when I started to go into the editing sessions the coloring sessions, the sound sessions, uh, the music sessions, audio sessions, because I wanted to learn everything. So it was in post from literally the day after we finished shooting, uh, all the way until minutes before we dropped it online. And we dropped it online Friday, April 13th, and we were still editing parts of it, uh, like right before we pushed that button. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. And... You are now nominated for a primetime Emmy because of yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what is that like? Do you even, is that even like in, I, I see, I follow you on social media, we're friends on Facebook, like I see all the parties you're at now, all, like what has that been like? It, it's still surreal yeah. to me. Uh, I, I just went to my first uh, Emmy party or uh, hosted Television Academy party um, that was honoring the performer nominees. And that made it really, really cool. I mean, it's been cool the whole time, but like that, that's the one where people who didn't quite understand what I did, because no one, not a lot of people quite understand the short form category yet. It's only been around for three years. But at this reception, I was on stage with the other performer nominees who were there. And that was like Lily Tomlin and Henry Winkler and Brian Cranston, Regina King. Louis Anderson, like huge, huge names who like I grew up watching. And then also uh, they took a group photo. 
which is amazing. And, you know, there I am, just, you know, between Darren and Chris and Finn Whitrock, just Lynn. Yeah, as you <laughs> so, do, as a it's, normal two-step. Yeah, yeah, it's so weird and crazy. And then, so you go from doing that to then all of a sudden going and doing these other events where people don't quite know who you are. But it, it's just, it's such a... a uh, a difference between the two, but it's been really, really fun, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Yeah, take it all in, right? Like, mm -hmm. how do you not, you have to stand there and be like, holy shit balls! I'm standing next to Lily Tomlin. Like, how do you yeah. know? Like, how she do you kissed me on the cheek. Oh she kissed God. me on the cheek, and it was, it was <laughs> what? No, I would have that oh tattooed my already. I would have yeah. <laughs> Um, you are like me from the Midwest. You're from Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah. What was that like? Like, when did you leave Minnesota? Because you went to college uh, in Minnesota, right? I, I grew up in Minnesota, and then I came out to L.A. the summer before senior year of high school. I took an acting class, and then while I was here, I found representation. So I found an agent and a manager, and they're like, you just got to get here. You got to get here. You can start working. And so I was like, okay. So I went back to Minnesota. I graduated a semester early from high school, 17 when I moved. Um, so I turned 18 in Los Angeles, but then I did enroll in college while I was in LA, but I enrolled in Glendale Community College. It was a lot easier to drop community college classes than it was to drop a four-year school. Cut a lot of money, big difference. Um, and then, so I did two years at Glendale, and then I actually did transfer, and I finished up at Cal State Northridge. So I did, I did go to school. I got a communication studies major and an economics minor. What do you think, I always like, what do you think, growing up where you grew up kind of helped get you to where you are now. So I feel like Midwestern uh, people oh, have such a yeah. different mentality yeah. of the world. I completely agree. Uh, growing up in Minnesota, I mean, it shaped me into who I am now and I, I haven't changed. I mean, I, I think that I'm, I'm nice and I think I'm too nice in LA. I think there's a lot of people who use that to their advantage. Yeah. Uh, although I, I've been here for eight years, so Yes, I am inherently nice, but I also realize when people are trying to use me or take advantage of me. Uh, and I always talk about Minnesota saying it's a great place to grow up. The environment was amazing. It was so nurturing as a child and even as a, as a teenager. But then with my profession, I, yeah, it's just not a great place for me to live. I'll go visit, of course, but uh, I have no family left in Minnesota. They all moved. So my parents finally moved when, uh, like three years ago. And so we were transplants, and I'm the youngest of three, and when I was, I was born there, and then that rooted us, and we stayed. My parents stayed for over 20 years, um, but then, yeah, they, they finally moved, so the only reason I had to go back to Minnesota is to visit my friends, so they got to invite me. Yeah. Come on, people. Come yeah. On. Just go during the summer. Don't go in the winter, obviously. Have them come to you. Yeah. I have Minnesota <laughs> friends actually coming here in October to San Antonio. And I was like, bring, bring swimsuits, like, we're going to be at the pool. Yeah. And they're like, in October, the end of October, I was like, yeah. yeah. Like, it's a whole different world here, kids. Get ready. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I would not change it. Like, Wisconsin is a place to visit and a place to leave. Yes. That's what I think, yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. Um, can you talk about Liam, your character on Broken? Sure. So I play Liam, and he suffers from paranoid schizophrenia. And it, Liam, he, I don't want to say he's a tragic character, but he does, his medication gets switched unbeknownst to him. And so that, that sets off a series of events where he, he may not be a reliable narrator in a way, because the story is shown through Liam's perspective and Liam's eyes. Uh, but it, it's meant to be disorienting. It's meant to be confusing because it's, it's an accurate portrayal of what someone who's experiencing schizophrenia is going through. And in order to accomplish that, uh, one of my biggest fears as an actor is not accurately portraying something. So I did a lot of research on schizophrenia and I listened to a lot of auditory schizophrenic hallucination simulations. And then I also watched a lot of visual schizophrenic hallucinations on YouTube. And so it was the combination of those two things that got me into the mindset of playing a character who has schizophrenia. And it was really the auditory ones, uh, hallucination simulations that helped me the most because um, they, at the beginning of the video, say, put your headphones in, listen to this thing, and then just go about your daily business. Don't sit down and just listen, do something. And so I did. And I was just walking around my apartment. I was doing laundry, cleaning, cooking. And then these, it was 
discomforting and it was it, it was creepy and so that that really got me into the mindset of liam because 90 percent of what you see in broken takes place within his head or is a distortion of reality wow how long did you study that i mean without that it's obviously not something that you just pick up in a day you pick up a, your headphones and you're like oh, yeah I got it like that that's that's intense it, it was uh but like I said, we were we were in pre-production since May of last year. So, I mean, every few days I would pick up my headphones, listen to something. I would I would watch videos. I watched videos with people who had schizophrenia. Uh, some people did TED talks, and then so there are some bloggers too who have schizophrenia who just talk about their experience and how they're not monsters and they're normal people. And so I would watch those um, periodically. So for a while, my search history and YouTube was just all like schizophrenia, like, like paranoid delusions, hallucinations, simulations, like all that. So if someone didn't know that I was doing this for a role, they'd be like, what the hell? Well, let's like, check on are you okay? more often. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, and it shows it, it, your dedication to it shows the realism in this show, the acting, it's so good. You should be, so, well, I'm sure you are super proud of it. And it's, it's shown Thank because you. it's, it's, it's uh, nominated for awards, so there you go. Um, we it was actually nominated for two primetime Emmys. So uh, this new category of short form, outstanding short form comedy or drama series, there's there's three uh, categories. So there's the series, then there's outstanding actor and actress in a short form comedy or drama series. So we received nominations in both the actor and actress category because Lee Garlington, who plays our therapist oh my God, or the therapist, her. she also got nominated. Yeah, I love her. Um, mm -hmm, if, she's amazing. If she, <laughs> if she wanted to sit next to you, that's fine by me. I would talk to her too. Um, uh, you, I I will I will pass off her information to you, and then you can reach out to her PR person. I'm yeah. sure she would love to talk to you. I would love to talk to her. Uh, thank you. Uh, what do you think how, of how like TV film is going now with digital? With you don't have to, you can have great content mm. and be seen and heard outside of the you know four channels. Yeah, uh, it's good and it's also bad because it's great that there's so many more opportunities and there's so many more avenues and uh, mediums, but then it's also bad because there's so many avenues and mediums and shows and so some things do get lost in the shuffle because there's just so much and one person does not have time to watch everything. Uh, but for someone like me, it's a perfect opportunity to create your own content because I wasn't having the opportunities of any named celebrity or someone who's internet famous or someone who's just unknown to name for whatever reason, uh, because those people attract viewers. Whereas I would get passed over for those roles or even opportunities I wouldn't be considered. So I'm a huge proponent of creating your own content because there are so many internet based uh, distribution sites that I'm still learning about every day. Someone's like, Oh, do you know this medium? Do you know this channel? And I've never heard of it, but they're, they're, they're specific. There's like horror ones there. So there's ones like specific to horror. There's ones that are specific to comedy or there are ones that are like specific to say, race or gender identity. And so it, there's a lot of different little subcategories. Uh, so I like it. And I do think that the direction that film and television is heading in general is the concept of binge watching because I think a lot of people, myself included, sit down and I just, if I like something, I just want to keep going and I want to go at my own pace. I don't really want to wait week after week. Yeah. Although there are some exceptions and those would be like the major, major shows like Game of Thrones, Handmaid's Tale, The Walking Dead. Like my family watches those and that's kind of like how we bond is like we, we talk on the phone like, oh, did you see this episode? Like, oh, what's going to happen next? Whereas with the binge culture, unless you're with someone in the room watching it together, it's a little harder to talk about it unless you've seen it all. Yeah. And then you can both talk about it. Uh, but it's a weird time. And I think that we're, we as in television is still trying to figure it out. Yeah. It's, it's been interesting to watch other people kind of navigate through that and try to figure out your own little niche of where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what it is right now. What are you watching right now? What are your favorites? So, like I said, Handmaid's Tale. I just finished that. I also watched Barry on HBO, if you haven't seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, that it's with Bill Hader and Henry Winkler. Oh, Barry, yeah. It's so yeah, funny. Yeah. So good. Uh, and then Black Mirror has always been a favorite of mine, and so I was watching that. And then I then I, that got me into uh, Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams, which is on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. 
And so uh, I guess that actually inspired Black Mirror, but Black Mirror was made first. So that I, it's like sci-fi, uh, modern day Twilight Zone. I love that stuff. And then also the Marvelous Miss Maisel. I just finished that. That's really good. Yeah. That's on Amazon Prime too. And I'm sure you'll probably meet some of those people in a couple of weeks, huh? I already met Henry Winkler, uh, and I will from meet Milwaukee. everyone else. Come on, from Milwaukee. He's from Milwaukee. I think so. Yeah. There's I didn't a, know that. Yeah, there's a Fawns statue downtown Milwaukee. I think he's from there. Yeah. Of course, of course there is. <laughs> and I'm sure we do a party for it, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, that's awesome. Um, so they're on the 17th are the primetime Emmys. Yes. Do you, have, do, you have, do you know who you're taking with you? I'm assuming you're going, right? I am going, although there are three ceremonies for the Emmys. And there have, there have always been, because there's so many Emmy awards. So... The one on the 17th is the, the televised one, and that's the one where all the lead actors and actresses, the supporting actors and actresses, and then Best Show uh, awards are given out because that draws in ratings for the network. The other two ceremonies are the weekend before, and so my ceremony is uh, actually on September 8th, and it's the Creative Arts Ceremony. So there's two nights of Creative Arts Ceremonies, and that's where they give out the short form category. They do like editing and hair and makeup and costume and casting directors and editing and the reality television uh so every other emmy is on the first two nights a lot of people don't realize that um but yes i'm bringing my parents so my my parents are flying out i got them tickets so i'm bringing them and then uh my other producers and my director they're all going too wow uh congratulations thank you i i'm hoping that i'm sure we'll be celebrating on the 8th uh, your win is what I'm guessing because hopefully I mean, yeah. come on. we have to <laughs> we have to uh, broken the series uh, broken the series dot com uh, good luck and congratulations thank you keep us posted absolutely thank you so much Richard it's very nice talking to you uh, first of all I am uh, super honored to even be talking to you you uh, have been in like every show I've watched my entire childhood um, so I'm super my excited what's that Mine too. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking to Miles yesterday, and uh, I was I was uh, looking at at your new show, and y your face popped up, and I was like, oh my god, it throws his daughter. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. And that's that's uh, and then I was doing research on you, and I was like, holy crap, you really have been in everything I've ever watched. What do you think? TV and, and entertainment and filmmaking, it's changing so rapidly, so so much recently. How, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you're on a you're you are now an Emmy nominee for a show that's on a website. Well, I think uh, personally, I think this is a renaissance in television like we've never had before. As my friend Gina Hack, a wonderful actress, we recently had this conversation of. How come when there were, you know, three networks and uh, a few movies, we worked all the time, and now there are 800 networks, 7,000 shows, and we're not on any yeah. of them? So it's, uh, I think, I think it's TV is absolutely in its heyday. I don't think it's ever been better. I think it's the cutting edge right now. It's not films. It's Handmaid's Tale and Succession and Ozark and and all the shows that are happening in you know on Amazon and Netflix and Hulu and HBO and Showtime and it, the people are going to the small screen before they're going to the big screen now because that's where it's at. Yeah. I want to talk about Broken, um, the amazing show you're in. How did you get involved with that? You know, I I it was an offer. I didn't even audition for it and I almost didn't do it cuz there's a, a a women's retreat I go to every year. And it happened to be that weekend, and I sort of hemmed and hawed, and then I decided to go do it because I really love the character, and I love doing independent films and working with you know first-time directors and producers, and I like being a part of that zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about um, your character in the show, Darlene, um, and, and about the show in general? Well, I, I think it's a show, you know, I... I have some uh, schizophrenia in my family, um, so I know a little bit about it. So I think what happens is if it's not treated, it's a very, very challenging uh, disease, dis-ease, you know, condition, however you want to word it, 
to uh, properly medicate and keep properly medicated because the body changes and the medicine that worked last year doesn't work this year. And, and kind of in the story, what unfolds is his friend, under the guise of, you know, helping him, takes away the medication he so desperately needs. And I, I think the people who have this disease are completely powerless. I don't even think they know, which is kind of what Darlene is trying to say to him, you couldn't have stopped it because you don't even know what's happening when it's happening. You're, you, you, the essence of you, is not there. The disease is taken over. It's like when you're talking to a drunk and you're no longer talking to the person, you're talking to the alcohol. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I think schizophrenia is. Uh, you've, yeah. been, you've been acting since the 80s. Right. What got you into acting? Well, you know, I reached the top of my career. I was a sound and radio engineer at NPR. And I was 26, and I kind of reached as far as you can go in that world. And I said, I have this dream, and if I don't do it, I never will, because I could easily have settled in and stayed at NPR. In fact, I listened to the, I listened to NPR every day, and there are still people there that were there when I left in wow. 1980. So, um, and I just said, you know, it's a dream deferred. Um, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to give it a shot. So I moved to Hollywood. I packed my bags and I moved to Beverly. <laughs> How long uh, were you there until you got got uh, your first role? I think it I think it was either two or three years. I got very very lucky. Mm -hmm. I got plucked out of an equity waiver play by a casting director named Jackie Birch, who stayed afterwards and said, "I like your work. Who represents you?" And I went, "Nobody." Mm -hmm. And she set me up with five agents, and she brought me in to audition for my first role. And I think she negotiated my deal, and I did uh, four days playing Myrna the Mean Waitress in Psycho 2. And it was like being high for four days. Yeah. It was the most fun I've ever had in my life, just, you know, being on a movie set, having that be my very first role on television and film. And I, I was doing, and I continued to do just a ton of theater, mm -hmm. but that was first acting professional acting job where I got paid real money $1,600 <laughs> for four days wow. which double the old salary at that point <laughs> Isn't it? Found $80 pair of purple boots that I still have <laughs> isn't it crazy how you remember the little things like that like you do you totally it never leaves you and now you are Emmy you have an Emmy nomination for this for broken Outstanding actress in a short form comedy or drama. What what does that what does that feel like? Uh, 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 strange. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's that thing you dream that you always want. I mean, I think if I were Miles' age, and it were happening, I'd be exactly like he is, just thrilled to death, and you know, uh, on just having the time of his life. For me, at this age, having, you know, sort of like, uh, I'm supposed to do what? I'm supposed to go where? I, I've got to buy I, I, social media? What? I, I do, I, 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 a Skype so, interview? So, what? Yeah. So it's been, it's been a very, you know, it's not in my wheelhouse, any of this. Mm -hmm. I'm not really mm -hmm. comfortable uh, doing it. But that doesn't mean getting out of your comfort zone is sometimes where life begins. And you got to really stretch. You, so I, I feel... Are you, go gonna go, are you gonna go to the awards? Oh, absolutely. Are you gonna wear your purple eight. shoes? I am not. I feel like you should. <laughs> no, I'm not. Thank you, but I got, I got, I got my outfit all picked out, awesome. ready to go. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, you're also filming right now, um, Christmas Harmony. Are you done filming that, mm, or is that? Yeah, that's done. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, it's a one, another little first time. Well, no, she's directed other things. I think it's her first. I think it's her first feature, a wonderful uh, director, and I'm desperately vamping here right now while I try to think of her last name, and I can't. Her first name is Nanea, and she's Hawaiian, and she is wonderful, and it was this marvelous crew of people. Again, kind of the same thing. I did an audition. I got an offer, and I got to work with uh, Sally Struthers, and I'm going to blank on everybody else's name right now because it's been over a couple of months, but it was... Um, the beautiful young woman from uh, the, the Pitch Perfect movies, blonde hair, um, oh, just a lovely woman. Uh, couldn't have been more fun. We were shooting in a very small town in Colorado, and it was just absolutely magical. Do you know when that's coming out? I do not, okay. but I bet there 
be for Christmas I this year. I had a feeling that's probably <laughs> when it's going to happen. I'm not sure. Um, what, are my... your, what are your thoughts on all of the, like, all the shows coming back? I mean, you've been on a lot of the shows that are sort of getting reprised. You've been on, on Will and Grace. You've been on Roseanne. You've been Murphy Brown's coming back. Like, what are your thoughts on all of those classic TV shows coming back? Well, I'm always happy when people are working. It's just nice to go, okay, more jobs, more people. Um, I wasn't, I didn't think the reboot of Will and Grace to me, for my money, wasn't quite as wonderful as the original. I think there are so many new, fabulous ideas and shows that are on the air right now. I don't know that we need to bring everything back, but if that's what people want, then fantastic. Yeah. People are employed. That's, that's the name of the game. Yeah. Get a job work so I'm yeah. thrilled yeah what are you what are you watching right now um, well we just finished watching succession which was amazing the one with Brian Cox I've actually just started the Americans because oh. I never saw it so we're sort of in between all of our shows start coming back we finished uh, Handmaid's Tale I watch a lot of English series we watched uh, like a four episode one called collusion with uh, uh, Carrie Mulligan and a whole bunch of other people um, that I know whose names I can't think of. Um, I, we watch everything. TV is kind of, uh, that's how we end every night is we sit in our living room and we watch an hour of some show and I just absolutely adore it. Can we play, a, uh, I want to play a fun little, not really a game with you, but since you've been on so many shows that I love, can I sh shout out some to you and can you give me a little like a little nugget from your time on set. Okay. Um, I want to go with, oh, I first want to start off with One Hour Photo, which is one of my favorite films with Robin Williams. Um, yep. I loved that movie. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I hear that name, I, I want to cry. Yeah. Uh, I worked with Robin twice, once on One Hour Photo, and then again, uh, The Angriest Man in Brooklyn, just one day each. Um, I thought he was, at his essence, one of the kindest men I've ever met in my life. I mean, we all know how freaking funny he is and how fast his brain works. But I think there was this uh, kindness and love and great intelligence and humor. Mm -hmm. um, the Golden Girls. Uh, fun, because I, I was shooting a series called Lenny at the time where I played Lenny Clark's wife. It was a Whit Thomas. We were all in a little sound, a uh, uh, little studio, which was all Whit Thomas Harris. So it was Empty Nest, Golden Girls, Lenny, and I think there was one other show. And we all hung out together. Uh, fun. Uh, Betty White is the coolest woman I've ever met in my life. Um, you know, just hung around. Well, all of us hung around together, and it was just lovely. Fun. Um, yeah. Six Feet Under. Uh, I did two of those. Um, Robert Pine, who I adore, played my uh, hus boyfriend, husband, whatever he was. Uh, working with Patricia Clarkson, is she's a really uh, consummate actress. I would put her in a category with, like, Laurie Metcalf. Like, I've worked with Laurie twice. The, the people that you, or Allison Janney, that, or Viola Davis, where you just go, okay, up your game, girl, because you are in the presence of you know, a powerful uh, force of creativity. Yeah, totally. Um, there's so many shows that I want to talk. I wish we had nine days to talk to you. Hey, keep uh, going. All right. We said, oh, now, what else do we have? We have uh, uh, Nip Tuck. Oh, my God. That was so much fun because I thought there's no way in hell I'm getting this part because it was the lead. The episode was named Brigitte. And I had to go in and do this. I, I don't remember what it was. Romanian, Hungarian accent. And the one thing I've learned about accents, you can do them as badly as you want, as long as you do them consistently. <laughs> so I just went in and everything I said, I said the same way. And I was, there were heavy hitters sitting in that waiting room. And I was, I was, I, I literally, when my agents called and said, you got the part, I was like, can you check? Can you make sure? <laughs> you know, and it was so much fun. The leeches were a little freaky. Mm -hmm. um, I had leeches all over me. There were real leeches, uh, electronic leeches, rubber leeches, and I did have to have a couple of them touch me, and I was like, ah! but it was really, they were they were wonderful, wonderful people. That was a great show. A great it was fun. Um, yeah. What about Roseanne? 
Um, okay. Um, what about, <laughs> what about uh, Friends? Oh, that was so much fun. I loved, um, uh, it was just, I think I was maybe the first or second or even third season. They weren't quite uh, catastrophically famous at that point. And it was still, they, there was this sort of camaraderie and niceness and community. And I felt, I just read an article where somebody said they never, um, sorry, my eyes are so watery from Robin Williams. Um, there was somebody who said they didn't feel like they were ever included or a part of it. I just felt like even the, I was only in scenes with Joey, but I don't think they could have been nicer. I, I saw uh, Jennifer Aniston, like I remember two weeks later, she was at a little re re uh, restaurant that I go to and I sort of waved to her and she came over to the table and put her hand on my shoulder and said hello to everybody I was sitting with and I was like, wow, wow. gracious. They were very gracious, I thought. So and talent. Yeah. And Marta Kaufman is a genius. Mm -hmm. so. All right, two more and then I'll let you go. Seinfeld, of oh. course. Yeah. And what was the other one? Okay. And um, and because my dad will be really excited to hear you talk about uh, Coach. Oh my God, a show that was I used to watch all the time with my with my dad. Yeah, I worked with uh, Craig a couple of times. I did a movie with him. What we did with Kirk Douglas, where we played brother and sister. He's truly one of the funniest men. I don't even think the TV ever captures how freaking funny he is. Um, he was. It was. It was. It was so much fun because he hated me. The, the name of the episode was I Hate Barbara, and I was Barbara, and I I just had a ball. It was just like like one of those shows that from beginning to end, it was it was just a bomb. It was so much fun. That's so cool. You've had such yeah. a great career. Right. You know, I am truly. I I was talking about this with Miles the other day. I just it was sort of like I I have a body of work that I'm really proud of. Um, it, your career never is like you imagined it unless you're, you know, Meryl Streep or Denzel Washington. Um, but it, it's like, I look, I, I look back at what I've done and I go, wow, wow. Yeah. You know, it's amazing when you think about it, that you ever get one job, let alone 300. Yeah. And that is, uh, that's, I'm so grateful for the adventures I got to have. And you're not even mentioning my favorite things, which is Phil Alden Robinson. Talk about uh, it then. Look, I want to talk about a, anything you want to talk about. All right. He's the most wonderful writer, director who ever lived. He wrote All of Me, the one with Lily Tomlin mm -hmm. and Steve Martin. And then he went on to write and direct. And he, he put he called me his lucky charm and he put me in all his movies. So I was in In the Mood. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> erase this part. Uh in the mood, field of dreams, some kind of uh, not no, some of some of all fears, um, <laughs> sneakers, uh, the angriest man in Brooklyn. So the bestest, most wonderful part of my career was being and getting to you know work with, as a result of Phil Robinson getting to work with you know Sidney Poitier and Van Affleck and Morgan Freeman and Kevin Costner and Patrick Dempsey and. Robin Williams and all the people I got to work up because I had the honor of being Phil Alden Robinson's good luck charm. So that's like the absolute favorite part of my career is getting to be in his movies. Wow. I just wish you more of them. <laughs> Dang it. Um, what do you say to people like, like Miles or kids like myself, people like myself who are trying and working their butts off to, to do what they love and get out there? What do you, what do you say to them? You know, it's so interesting. Um, I've known Brian Cranston for 25 years. We're not like friends, but we know each other. And I was invited to go to, he did like this little lecture for the Los Angeles SAG After Conservatory, which I'm on the committee uh, for a class. And there were like 10 of us in the room. And he talked about the fact that he has had a lifelong love affair with acting. And, you know, currently I feel a little bit like I'm in a relationship with an abusive lover. But, you know, besides that, I, I, it, he reminded me of the passion and the joy of doing what it is you love to do. And, you know, everybody has to make a choice. How long do I do it without remuneration or reward? Do I do it forever? You know, where is, you know, where is my joy? And and I, I, I loved hearing his passion and being reminded that, you know, uh, 
as we always say in show business, if you say, well, what else could you do? Well, otherwise, I'd like to be a doctor. Then our response is, then go be a doctor. Yeah. You know, show business is for people who don't think they can do or even want to think about doing anything else because there's there's a price to pay. You know, if there's a huge, you know, it's it's a business where many are called and few are chosen. There will always be more job applicants than there are jobs. Your mother, father, sister, brother, husband, wife have told you why it's a bad idea. Um, 10% of our industry makes a living and 10% of that 10% makes a good living. So it's statistically, it's not a smart thing to do. But if it's in your soul and your heart and it's, it's the essence of your being, then you don't have any choice. You have to do it. I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be friends and you just don't realize it yet. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for spending some time with me today. Oh, my God. Thank you. I this is so much fun. Well, I'll call you tomorrow and we can hang out again. Okay, great. Uh, Set it up. Make sure you're going to BrokenTheSeries.com. Watch Broken. Congratulations on your nomination. Good luck. I'm looking I forward to, uh, to, to hearing that you won. Well, and if you do, then let's chat again. Because I'd love to. And uh, I want that thing right next to you. Okay, I'll, I'll hold it like this and make love with it. <laughs> Perfect, and I'll film it. <laughs> All, All right. right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your night. Now, how do I turn off? <laughs> There's a red <laughs> button. I'll I'll turn it off too. There's a red button with a phone. You turn that off. Red button with a phone. Yep. Is it a heart? Red heart? No, probably at the bottom. You probably have to touch the screen. Oh, the plus sign again.